Help, my mortgage business sucks. Welcome to our fourth episode. In this episode, guys, if you remember last week, we talked about pumping up your leads, increasing realtors. And now that you've done that, you've converted this thing into a lead machine. But now all these leads are coming in and you're potentially dropping the ball, right? So we're going to talk about eliminating the embarrassment of having leads fall through the cracks, eliminating the frustration of building an amazing realtor referral system, then burning it when you mishandle their clients, right? But before we unleash our nuggets of wisdom, I have here with me our two powerhouses. We have Dan Ellis. What's up, Dan? Vice President of Strategy at RCG Mortgage. 25 years in the business, billion dollar producer. He's hired, trained, coached hundreds of LOs, a production management guru across, and I love saying it between Wendy from Billions, Dr. Phil and Jesus. Whether you're head of production, area manager, or loan officer, before you burn down your operations and start over again, you'll want to reach out to Dan first. How are you, Dan? What's going on, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks, Andrew. That's you? Intro. I wonder what they would say yeah. to me sometimes. <laughs> right? Then we got Doug Cataray, Vice President of Sales at RCG Mortgage. He has 30 years in the sales and origination space. Top producer, was a broker owner, ran multiple, multiple successful teams. He's had tens and tens and tens and thousands of hours coaching LOs and realtors over the past decade. If you're a producer or you run a team and you feel like you aren't maximizing your efforts, you'll want to listen to what Doug, the ROI guy, says. What's up, Doug? What's up, Andrew? What's up, gentlemen? How are you guys doing? How are you? Good to see you, Doug. Living Good the good, dream, man. Thank baby. You. Living the dream. So, so check it out. We talked last week about I was on a helicopter, you know, shooting guns. <laughs> you know answering the phone be like what's up oh like that first referral opportunity you know slaying the dragon getting that opportunity but what i didn't tell you is eventually you know building a relationship with that team i was once at one of the team meetings and it was pretty soon after that and you know i was kind of talking through some of the logistics with the team what makes us so cool and there was this one agent right this one agent he wouldn't look me in the face and I was like, I'm really not that ugly, you know, like I'm pretty charismatic. So, you know, I asked the team lead who, you know, was, was the person in the story the other week. I'm like, you know, why? We'll call him Bill. Everyone's always named Bill, right? Like, why didn't Bill look at me? Like, wh why was it so uncomfortable? He's like, Andrew, he's like, I'm just going to be honest with you because you're my boy. Um, and we built that relationship. You mishandled when he gave you a client. You dropped the ball. And I was like, stop. What do you mean? And he's like, yeah, he said he did exactly what you said. You want, did a group text with you and the client and like you just never surfaced and you didn't handle it and you kind of embarrassed him. He actually lost the client. They ended up going with another realtor as well. And I was like, stop, dude, there's no way. So of course, you know, I don't delete texts. I'm one of those OCD creepers. I don't know if you guys do the same, but like I look through my phone and I'm like, oh snap. Like I literally got a group text, perfect intro. Hey, this is Andrew. He owns his mortgage company. Take great care of you. And you know what I didn't do, guys? I didn't take great care of that client. I dropped the ball. So mm -hmm. it just goes to show that you can slay the dragon. Put in, I mean, listen, us as LOs, we put in so much work to build realtor relationships. So Herculean effort sometimes. And you have to wait for another LO sometimes to drop the ball. You get your chance. You build an ecosystem of amazing agents. And then what happens? You tell them what to do. They do it. And you fall flat and potentially, you know, like you only get one chance at a first impression. And I definitely dropped the ball there. Super frustrating. But why do you guys think, why do most LOs not have like a system, a lead tracking system or a follow-up system like I didn't have? Why do you think they don't have that in place? Man, you know, I'll jump into that one. Um, and I, I've wrestled with that for the last 25 years of my career. Um, man, I don't understand it. I, I think it's I think it's a lack of training. I think it's uh, well. I, I know for myself, and maybe there's someone listening or watching this podcast that maybe they did go to college for mortgages. Maybe they got a an introduction in the level 101 to level 401 training class on how to be a better business owner in the mortgage space. But uh, and please let me know if there's a university out there because I've not found one. Um, and so I think a lot of LOs just they, they overlook it because it's not glamorous. There's not a lot of uh, there, there there's not a lot of there's not a lot of glamour in tracking leads. It doesn't sound like a lot of fun. It's like balancing a checkbook. Um, but I kind of subscribe to this whole concept of the more that you track something, the more that you manage or pay attention to something, it always tends to improve. And whenever I'm working with a business owner or I'm working with an originator uh, in the lending or realtor space, I find it's one of the very first thing that we uncover that's probably the weakest link in their business. 
And it's amazing how many times that when you start to pay attention to those numbers, how quickly you pivot and start seeing a return on your investment with very little effort other than just understanding what you have to pay attention to. Well, Doug, do you have an example of how you, you because again, you've coached longer than I've been alive, right? Because I'm young. Um, I wouldn't go that far. You're not that far behind me. <laughs> I know, but my kids say shave the Santa beard. It's brutal, dude. I get hated on at home by my little girls. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another story. Shout out to Gabby for the cool bracelet. So do you have an example of in your tens and tens of thousands of, of uh, hours coaching of someone who came to you and was like, hey, Doug, you did like your forensic, right? You pull up the hood, see what they're working with, and they aren't tracking. And then you deployed a very basic tracking system. They saw results. Yeah. You know, most of the time, most of the time, if somebody's not tracking, if after they if they track for 90 days, if they're just paying attention to the simple measurable about one oh, referral weeks. a day, one referral a day, if they can do that for 90 days in a row, we typically see about a 20 to 25 percent increase in their overall production. That's amazing. And so the, 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 the first thing is, how do we how do we how do we get excitement? How do we lean into something and want to do it more often? Man, we're all in, we're all instant gratification seekers. And that tracker is just like a truth serum that you have to look at or a mirror that you have to look at every single day. And it's uh, it's usually a make or break for somebody that wants to grow their business versus someone that just says they want to grow their business. That makes sense. So so let me ask you, Dan, though. So we've talked about LOs that get all these realtor accounts we spoke about last week. They put in the work. But when they do them, why do you think they're not converting these leads and more of these clients at a higher level? Why are they inevitably just dropping the ball? Well, I would say, generally speaking, um, they're just not stepping back from the process, right? So what does that mean? So let's put it in the context of, let's call it a client journey, right? So if I would ask, and I've asked lots of times, tell me about the client journey and the experience that you want to deliver to your partners and to your buyers. Tell me about that. They're like, kind of crickets, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, well, so what do you want it to be like? They just haven't thought about an, an experience that they deliver. And so when you don't think about it from that perspective, you tend to not know what you're doing every step of the process. You don't say it the same way every time that you talk to them. If your team is making the calls and talking, they don't know what they're saying and they're saying different things every time. And every time that you touch where you don't make an impact, you have a lost conversion opportunity. So I would say that it's just really not mapping out step by step, word for word, what happens every step of the loan process. And I can get deeper into that. But generally speaking, that's where it starts. I mean, Dan, you make a great point, right? Because even back then when I was the younger Andrew Russell, you know, less white, a little bit less, you know, on the waist side, a little bit better shape, a little bit more svelte, a little bit more pep in my step years back. Um, you know, I, in my head was like, all right, I have to build relationships with all these top producers, you know, get in front of them, build a relationship, have the dinners with them, have the commonalities, you know, build those friendships and then get the business. But to the point of losing that client and then eventually that realtor, I didn't, to Dan's point, I didn't think about the journey, what I wanted it to look like. I was just like, oh, you know, grit and grind, business development, build relationship with agents, but don't think downstream. I wasn't really, you know, thinking of the big picture. So that's definitely great advice for those that are kind of stepping in space or those that are actually currently in it right now. But I mean, we talk about sourcing and just lead tracking. So Doug, why is it so important? Why don't you just like, listen, if you close four to five loans a month, you're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, you know, depending on some, some different factors where you're working, all that good stuff. So that's a great living, right? That's as much as doctors. Why don't people just wing it? Because no one else is doing it. Why should we track? It's because no one else is doing it in the lending space. Heck, no one's doing it in the realtor space. Why should you do it? It's because it puts you ahead of the curve and it allows you to rise above the fray. And let's be honest, if we're going to take advantage of the market that's in front of us, those that have are going to understand the importance of having a system and a process. And tracking is just one of the many things. And there's so many more details that I want to go into this with. But instead of doing that, you know, I just actually... Came to mind. I just actually recorded a entire class on tracking the what, the how, the why, the who, all the fundamentals around doing it. We put it in our uh, our private community. Help my mortgage business sucks. You can go log into it and become a member and check it out there at hmmb.sucks. Again, hmmb.sucks. 
go and find it in the bonus section. It'll be a class that will teach you the importance and the power of tracking and what it actually does for your business if you're interested. Because just remember this, if you're doing it, I can promise you many of the other people that you're competing against aren't and your referral partners, I guarantee you aren't. So that's why. You heard it, guys. Check it out. HMMB.sucks. You know, Doug's definitely dropping the lit content. Doug, can you say the word lit for me? Lit. Dropping the lit. Dude, <laughs> Get the kids it lit. Are... Get it lit. Let's go. Dude, the kids are saying it, man. We got to keep <laughs> up. Gotta... So so look, guys, you know, we, we always, with our podcast, want some big takeaways, some easy, you know, chewable, digestible little nuggets to implement your business literally right now. So, Dan, let me ask you, what do you recommend to LOs to ensure they convert the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross leads, right? You know, we all love that scene where there's the good stuff and, hey, my watch costs more than your life or whatever. But what do you, what's a, a takeaway for how LOs can convert that at a high level? Where do they begin? Uh, I call Doug first. That's always where I start is looking in the tracking, right? You can't uh, ignore the numbers. Yep. Yep. So I would, I would call Doug first, but once you call Doug and you start looking for progress, right? And you have that foundation built, I'd say it's just like any other relationship, right? So let's say that the lead is sourced from a, a realtor partner, right? That realtor partner has a reputation, they have a conversation, and then that conversation leads to a referral to you. That's where the opportunity starts, right? Like if you assume as a loan officer, everything that's happening, everything that's said, everything that's thought that's happening between that buyer or those buyers and the agent, like don't make the assumptions anymore. So start there, right? Get into agreement with your partners on what your journey looks like from when they first talked to them, right? And then it, when it comes to what they should do or what I would recommend once it becomes your responsibility and that handoff is made to you, I'd start here, ask yourself this question. Am I having the same conversation with a buyer every single time? And, you know, at the end of the day, I've asked a lot of folks and they say, I'm not, you know, I've been in this for a long time. And I ask them this question then, do you forget some things? You get off the phone, you tell them this is what the next step is. And then you have to call them back or you don't call them back. And then later on in the process, there's something that's missing and something that's not clear. And it all came from that first conversation. So I would say the first thing that they could do is just look at the first conversation and to get that down the same way every time. Because if you don't do that, there's no way that you can say that you have a clear client journey uh, in terms of in your business strategically in place so that you can deliver it the same way every time. Right. So I would start there first. And people are like, well, where do I start? I say, why don't we do this? How many applications do you take a week? How many times do you do this call? I say, oh, five or six times. I say, well, record one. Start there. Brutal. Get the transcript. Right. Like start there. Get the transcript, edit it in the way that you want to. And then the next time that you get a chance to do this, let's call it a hopes and dreams call. Because let's let's face it, a buyer, this is their hopes and dreams. They don't really want to talk to a mortgage pro. They really want to talk to somebody who's going to tell them how they're going to be able to achieve their hopes and dreams, right? So if you just do that first, map out that call, and then go back to your realtor partner and say, hey, I did something really cool. I went through and I made sure that I focused on what that experience is going to be like from the handoff. Why don't we coordinate what you're saying with what I'm saying? So we just knock their socks off and ensure that everybody that you send over ends up crossing the finish line. Well, there you have it. That's reverse engineered at its highest level you know instead of just going into the thing make sure you map out the plan first so it's obviously it's amazing advice so thank you so much but doug what is a quick and easy way an elo right now can implement a lead tracker a lead tracking system because even to me you know when i first in fairness started speaking to you it was like hey are you tracking and i'm like hell no i'm the man i'm grit and grind baby like i just get it done and he's like all right let's take a step back and we're going to start tracking. But to those who don't know what it is, or maybe they're doing it and it's not at a high level, what's a quick and easy way of something they can implement right now from a lead tracking perspective? And you want simple and easy and quick and uh, um, relevant? Uh, text the word sucks to 516-518-9880. Again, 516-518-9880. Text the word sucks. 
and I'll send you the referral tracker that I've created over the last decade. It's been modified, it's been adjusted, and I've boiled it down to the core fundamentals of what you need. And in there is going to be basic information that everyone should know about. Um, but I promise you, if you apply the principles of what I teach in that class in our community, you'll understand the power behind it. And it's really simple. If you can fill out our, if you can fill out an Excel spreadsheet with about seven pieces of information and take all about 15 seconds to complete, I promise you it'll change your business. It will change your production and it'll make you way more valuable to your referral partners. Plus it'll take all the drama out of your brain. It'll allow you to look at your business from a, from an objective point of view and really learn how to do what Dan talks about, right? Creating a journey because you'll get that clunkiness out of the, uh, out of the very first part of the uh, process. Yeah. So that's, how much does that cost? Free? I, I'm, I'm giving it away to anybody that's watching this for free. Like, just go yeah. to hmmb.sucks and just uh, text it to 516-518-9880, and I'll send you a copy of it. And uh, it's a basic Excel spreadsheet. It's nothing techy. It's nothing complicated. But if you use it, and I mean really use it daily, like the bookends to your business, open it up in the morning, close it at the end of the day, look at it, ask yourself, did I add anybody? it will change your business. This is the number one tool that I've found that every time I coach somebody, it is the foundational piece of how I get those that are willing to grow. That's how they start. That's how they root I mean, themselves. listen, I had to pay thousands a month and I had to like get to know you, which was so brutal. Yeah, but, God, um, and then eventually- <laughs> It's mutual, bro. It's mutual. Right? And then like eventually you're like, hey, Andrew, like I'm going to send you an Excel. whoop de doo You're- you're tens and tens and thousands of in the hole. Like, and here you go. It's an Excel. Merry Christmas. So the audience is going to be awesome. So text sucks to 516-518-9880 and you'll get it for free. And you won't have to talk to Doug every other day, even though that, that did in fact change my life. So it's all good. I appreciate that. Well, speaking of, so we have an amazing sponsor, obviously, for our podcast. So the sponsor is the Broker Accelerator Program at RCG Mortgage. So the Broker Accelerator folks, the three of us wolves looking at us right here came together because we saw a huge gap in the marketplace, huge need for turning loan officers from solopreneurs into CEOs because there's so much to go from, and we're talking about it right now, right? That four or five a month loan officer, maybe they're tracking. Back in the day, I wasn't, I could tell you that to someone that scales their business, but also does it with a little bit more freedom. So they're not working 70, 80 hours a week. You know, there's definitely a hole in the market, especially in the tri-state and the East Coast to how to do that. What does that involve, right? What tech stack, what team building strategy, what coaches, everyone wants to be an influencer. You know, how do you grow and scale your, your brand on social? So we came together because We've all collectively definitely have the secret sauce and there's so much info to offload to the market and to build a great team. So Dan, why don't you touch upon a little bit about what the broker accelerator is to you and why we came together in this amazing movement? Yeah. So, you know, the reality, we talk about the gap, right? So that's our perspective, our, our perception and our experience. My experience in 27 years of doing loans is that there's really not a comprehensive plan for helping loan officers, no matter where they're at in their business, and to help them develop where they're at, a plan to get them to at least back to this foundational level. Let's call it their their best ever, right? So there's there's a time in our history where we hit our best ever, and like, how do we get back there? So when you have when you have somebody coming in like Doug, you have somebody coming in like me as coaches, and we're dedicating all of our time to each and every one of the people that we work for us. We have the experience, we have the tools, we have the resources, and we have the time to dedicate to the individual, right? So when people come into the broker accelerator, it's like they sign up for these $2,500 a month coaches, and there's a lot of different ones, but those who are dedicated in their business each and every day. And so I just found that if you can dedicate that time, like a non-producing manager does in a typical business, like you can get amazing results from each and every person that comes in. So that's my vision for it. Well, thank you. That's what I see said. that we can deliver. Absolutely perfectly said. So guys, if you're unhappy right now with where you're at, with the product mix, you know, just with the tech stack, you know, some of the stuff that we just touched upon for a confidential conversation, text CRUSH, that's C-R-U-S-H, CRUSH, to 516-518-9880. 516-518-9880 for a confidential conversation with the three of us 
on what we can do to help you turn from a solopreneur into a CEO and to do it with more freedom because there's nothing worse than killing it. The phone's ringing, right? All the stuff that we're teaching is really, you know, it's popping off nice, but you know, your kids looking at you at night wanting you to get off the phone. You're on the soccer field and you know, it's happened to me. I've missed watching my own daughter score a goal because you answer the phone and there's strategies, there's tactics. There's so much that the three of us collectively has learned. So make sure if you want a confidential conversation to see how we can change and grow your business the right way, text CRUSH to 516-518-9880. So guys, we're getting a lot of traction with this podcast. You know, there's a huge opportunity in the marketplace for education, especially in this area. You know, one of the questions that I was actually asked was what type of follow-up system do I deploy with the agents besides just the client? So to me, just to keep it simple, from a, a quick, from a nugget perspective to anyone listening, when you get a lead, right? So in other words, you get a group text. It's like, hey, Bill, this is Stephanie. She's looking to buy a condo. You guys should, you know, touch base. You know, Bill's the best in the business. We'll take great care of you, Stephanie. Um, that's all great. But where that fails is, when the agent, let's call him John, is like, in a week, hey, Bill, just following up, whatever happened to Stephanie? That is a fail. Big fat fail. Scarlet letter of a failure, right? So to me, if I was an agent, you know, like, I empathize. And they're giving us, like, their opportunity to feed their family. Like, hey, service this client. This client is great. Yeah, regardless of, of what whatever we're making, like, this person could be a residual income uh, type referral source, they like <laughs> they deserve the loan officer to keep them in the loop. Now, outside of all fancy tech and automations and all this, you know, other stuff, that's all great. But outside of all that, basic, you know, be it <laughs> is what we call. So every time you speak to the client, speak to the, the referral partner. Like, hey, John had a great conversation. You know, she's sending me all her docs, etc. So like. Think of it to me in statuses, right? You have a new lead. And then, you know, if you're not getting on the phone, it's like the whole, you know, contact to call back type status where you want to tell that referring party, like, hey, we're not getting them on the phone. They should know that because they're waiting on you to do your job and pre-approve them. Next period is the whole qualification period where are they pre-approvable? Do they not qualify today? But maybe they do quote unquote tomorrow. Do you have to put them in some kind of a long-term process? So you obviously will keep your agent in the loop. I can't tell you how many loan officers pre-approve that client guys send them their pre-approval on email and don't even tell the agent like and then they follow hey whatever happened with stephanie oh no no it's cool i pre-approved her two weeks ago you're like didn't you think you were like you should have told me so for me follow-up is very simple i just consider it a one-two punch every time you speak to the lead from that agent give the agent a call because what else does that do doug it gives you the opportunity to ask for another referral like hey i spoke to stephanie uh, it was a little bit difficult to pre-approve them. I did a bank statement program, whatever. But this is one of the reasons why you refer me, why we're the best here at RCG Mortgage, for instance, right? What else you got cooking? What are you doing this weekend? Doing an open house? Maybe we do some co-marketing. Do you want to hop on a Zoom and work on doing a home buyer presentation that we can scale on Zoom? It's just another opportunity to show you're killing it and ask for the business. But Doug, another question that we've been asked all the time is, is there a metrics of how many leads you need to get, how many referrals you need to get to close one loan. For instance, <laughs> is that like a, a certain number for you? And also on top of that, the percent of leads that you get or the number, is there a certain amount from a quality perspective that should be pre-approval? In other words, is it okay if an agent just sends 10 referrals to us a month and it seems almost none of them get to the finish line from a pre-approval perspective? What do you look for for lead yeah. to closing and leads yeah. even qualified. You know, what's kind of interesting about that question is it has more to do with how you see yourself. If you're not tracking your business, my guess is that it's probably one out of five. You're probably closing or pre-approving one out of every five of the referrals, organic based referrals. We're not talking lead gen, organic based referrals. What we find is though, is when, when you start to actually track your data, that number goes from maybe five or four to one to three to one. And so what mm -hmm. my goal is with every originator that I work with, with every realtor partner that I've coached is, is to increase their overall conversion rate. Because that conversion rate means that you're only willing to hang out and talk to people that are worthy of your time and your investment. 
which means that you're looking at your referral partners in a different light. And so tracking is, it's got so many spider webs into way more things than just what's on the spreadsheet. It is truly like a truth serum to your business. And so it's hard to say what to expect, but most of the LOs that I work with in the beginning usually start out at a 20% conversion rate or even somewhere in the teens. Uh, and we work them into a better than 30 to 35% uh, conversion rate uh, over the next uh, over the next several months. And that's really come, it just comes down to strategy. It comes down to consistency and messaging. That's it. And uh, your willingness to invest in your business. You know, the crazy thing is like you hear numbers, right? 20, 35, that working with Doug for him to improve all that, the conversion metrics, right? We'll just call it in layman's terms. Yeah. 20, even going from 20 to 30, 35%, you're increasing your income, you're increasing your production over 50%. Well, just, just think about what, the, if you were to simply take a conversion rate of 20% and increase your overall business by 10%, let's just say that works out to be, let's say out of uh, out of 30 referrals, instead of closing, instead of generating, I don't know, seven, refer, you know, seven closings, you generate 10 closings. What's an extra three closings in your business going to do for you? What's an extra 10%? 200,000 a year? I mean, let, let's be honest. Most of the time, it isn't that we don't have enough opportunities. It's that we're not tracking the opportunities and we're not following up on them long enough for it to make an impact. But that's where the ROI comes in. That's why I guess I've been going the ROI guy, because here's where it benefits you the most. You don't have to go out and get more. You just have to do better with what you got. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, and it's funny, as it relates to Dan's conversation about mapping out a journey, we actually had a question, which was, how do I get started? It's like overwhelming, you know, as a solopreneur, the, 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 uh, the idea of like mapping out a journey, like reverse engineering that it sounds like to LO seems a little rum. So a question for Dan is, how do I get started? What's the first singular thing that I should focus on to get that conversation going? Uh, the focus part is, okay, so let's, let's just step back for a second and say, what is the experience that you want to deliver, right? Are you a fun person? Are you very meticulous? You follow the numbers? Are you process driven? Like, how do people know you, right? And so if you ask your partners, who's, who's Andrew, who's Doug, like, how do they represent you, right? Um, what you want to do is you want to represent yourself in that transaction as yourself, right? So where you're natural, where you're fun, like, let's say, for instance, you, you wanted to host a party, right? If you're a host of a party, and you're like, man, I'm gonna have 100 people over at my house, like you get to choose. You don't ask 100 people, hey, what would you like for the party? What would you like for the party? Because a lot of loan officers, that's what it sounds like when they talk to a buyer for the first time. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think, right? So let's go back to this party that you want to host. You you know that not everybody's going to make it. You know that, you know, you got to pick the date. You got to be decisive. And you got to say, this is what, for the people that are going to get here, this is what the experience is going to be like, right? So if you look at your business that way and you look at every touch, in the process where you're talking to a partner, whether you're talking to a buyer, all the way through from the first touch, all the way to funding, like you have to realize this is like your own party. You get to design it the way that you want, the way that you choose. If you're not planning, then you're gonna have some holes in your party, right? So afterwards, people are gonna be like, he didn't have any drinks. They ran out of, they ran out of snacks. Like we had to leave. Like, the reality is this is the buyer experience. This is your partner experience if you leave holes in your business. So if you map out your party and you'd say, what is the experience that I want to deliver? The first the first uh, answer that comes to most people's heads is I'm going to have to change everything that I'm doing. I'm going to have to look at my entire business. And I would say that's a great freaking answer, right? So where do you get started? Well, you got to talk that about that first touch. So if you're saying, hey, I want to be known as the knowledgeable person that takes care of people, that's a good listener, that gives them what they want, that delivers what I say, then what you've got to do then is make that first contact that clear, right? You have to take leadership. If you specialize in working with first-time homebuyers, and I know, Andrew, that they're near and dear to your heart, they don't know where to go next. They don't know what to expect. This is your one chance to say, well, you don't know, but you're about to. This is the way that we do things here. We're going to take great care of you. I'm so glad that you're working with X as a referral partner because throughout this entire experience, you're going to know that we're on, we're both on your side, right? So the first thing that you're going to want to do is look at your business, say what sort of experience do I want to deliver, and then just start small. 
right? So if you got a new referral that comes in the door, you're going to have to take that call. You're going to have to take that call anyway. You're going to have to do it multiple times a week. So just slow down, take the first step and map that thing out. If somebody was to come in for the first time into your party, where are you going to tell them to go? What are you going to tell them to, they can experience? Where are they going to hang their coat? Where can they get a drink? Where do they get, you know, what is going to happen? Like if you can establish that sort of leadership in the first call, it's not a lot of bells and whistles. It's literally about slowing them down and going, let's take a deep breath. This can be fun. This is super exciting. Like, tell me why you're going over there and why you want to buy this place. That's awesome. Those are their hopes and dreams. And then deliver on your promise to let them know throughout their experience while they're out looking and after the house goes under contract that you're going to be them with them every step of the way. Now, if you can get that downloaded in your head and you start looking at your business and you map it out on just the first call, I would say that you're about 80% of the way there. Because once you start and you start experiencing the difference, people actually do what you ask, right? So without mapping out this first call, this is the problem that it shows up. I'm not getting the docs. They're not uploading the docs. They're not filling out the app. And, and then I ask, well, how long does that take normally? And they go, it can take two days. It can take five days. It can take 10 days. If you clearly map out this first call, within the first week, you'll say, I told them that I needed everything in in 72 hours. And you'll find roughly 80% of the people that you work with will get it to you within 72 hours or less. And all of those problems go away. So just to kind of summarize here, take a deep deep breath, look at your business, have some fun and realize you get to shape the experience of all the parties within the transaction, not just the buyers. And it's your party, right? You don't have to change for anybody. You get to choose. And once you do that, like everything becomes a lot more fun. The experience from all parties is that it's fun. It was light. It was clear. It was easy. And that's how we build the business, right? So if you can do that all in one conversation, I can assure you, you'll go on to the next step and the next step, and the next step, and map all those out too, because you'll just realize your life gets a heck of a lot easier when you look at your business that way. Well, there you go, guys. Ellos of America. We had two amazing mortgage nuggets today. You know, Dan talking about mapping out the client journey, reverse engineering, you know, kind of more downstream, thinking about how you want the client to experience, you know, the whole process, the conversation, amazing advice and frankly if i would have had that advice given to me heck i don't think even doug gave me that advice several years ago shots fired uh <laughs> if i would have had that advice you know could i have converted at a higher level been a little bit more successful a little faster absolutely so definitely work on reverse engineering and mapping out that journey first thank you for that dan and doug i mean listen guys a lead tracker out of the gate to track data expectations this was our second amazing nugget for this podcast you know, talking about how many leads you should be getting, what's the expectation lead to close, which is killer, right? You don't know where you're going unless you kind of analyze where you are today. So thank you for that. Uh, that was amazing as well. You know, and that's something that you added to my game years ago and it changed the game for me. So thank you for that. Guys, make sure you join our community, hmmb.sucks. We created this community for loan officers, by loan officers and mortgage coaches to help you grow in all the facets, not just being like, hey, here's product, or hey, here's rate, or hey, like go to this company for their payout. There's so much more that goes into being a CEO of your business, whether it's building a brand on social media and digital marketing, right? Three out of four, and probably going up daily, 75%, three out of four of your consumers, the first thing they do, they don't Google you. They stalk you out on social media. So how do you build that brand? We give tips and strategies all the time. We have coaching. We don't have branch managers or managers to Dan's point that are kind of in your business, you know, not really in your business. Um, we have coaches that are actually going to hold your hand and help you grow. And we do this all within the community. It's amazing. We talk about tech all the time. I mean, listen, there's AI and all sorts of technologies, right? We talk about it all the time. It's free. Make sure you join hmmb.sucks, guys. And also subscribe to this podcast. Share with your friends. Listen, this industry is big enough. There's plenty of loans to go around. So we're doing it as a community because we're having fun doing it together. So guys, now that we've built a huge ecosystem of agents, right? And what's happening? This iPhone that you told me to get, it's blowing up, right? <laughs> bang, bang. And I'm like, 
oh crap, Doug, Dan, like my phone's blowing up. I'm killing it. I took the lead tracker. But before I did that, Dan taught me how to make the experience amazing, referable, reverse engineered it. Then what happened? So, you know, on my Mondays, I come in, I have my Celsius. <laughs> right? You take a sip and what happens? Um, I make a call. I'm like, hey, remember that girl, Stephanie? Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Just, call, you know, do my follow-ups. How was your weekend? Whatever. What, what's new? Oh, Andrew, actually, you know, I, I found a place that I liked. And, um, you know, I'm going into contract and they actually had their own lender that they referred me to. And I'm like, Ooh. You know, all sorts of curses. Like, yeah, okay. You know, because what happened, guys? Hellos of America, you know what's happened, right? You talk to Stephanie all the time on the weekend. Your kid's playing sports. You're doing credit pulls on the soccer field, right? Just exponential credit pulls, all sorts of conversations, no work-life balance. And what happens? You didn't follow up and weeks, maybe a month goes by, and you think they're going to follow up with you, and they found someone else, right? They found another agent potentially and started working with that other lender all under your nose. So, you know, we call that the pre-approved and looking side of the fence. So next week we're going to talk about, man, that sucks, right? All that work because we don't, listen, we don't make money. We don't get the time back with our families by just pre-approving people. So we're going to talk about next week, tips and strategies to make sure you are top of mind aware with all of these pre-approved clients and there's no leakage, right? They don't work with other people, but you don't come across annoying and salesy and all that stuff. So thanks so much for tuning in guys. And until next time, we'll see you then.